Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to share with you a very, um, I would say, kind of low supply way to do some gel printing. And I was kind of thinking to myself, boy, oh boy, I love to do gel printing, but it just seems like a big ordeal. So when I go to make some gel prints, I usually do a ton at once, but sometimes I just want to do one or two, like for the background of a card or another project. So I got to thinking, what supplies could give me the most bang for my buck so that it wouldn't be a big deal for me just to grab a plate, grab some supplies, and make one or two prints. And the first thing that came to mind was, man, I just, I need acrylic paints and they just, they seem to take up a lot of space. I have to go and pull the colors that I want. I keep all my acrylic paints in a hanging over the door shoe organizer separated by color and um, it's in my crafty storage area. The kids use those paints. Um, so I always put them back there so everyone can find them when they want. It's just kind of a little bit more of an deal. And then I thought, well, what about gouache? I always have this set of gouache right next to my table. Um, it's my favorite set of gouache. I may actually use a set of gouache that isn't my favorite just because I don't feel like I need to have um, the best of the best when doing gel prints. It doesn't really, that quality doesn't really show in the gel prints I find anyway. Um, so I'm like, okay, if I could use gouache to gel print with, that would work really well. Now the problem with gouache on its own is that it doesn't have the glue that acrylic paint has in it. So acrylic paint um, by its nature is kind of like a PVA glue. The acrylic medium is a glue, right? That binder's a glue. So I thought, well, what could I use with my gouache to make it a little bit more like acrylic paint. So if I want to do a layered print where I have pan pastels and I have maybe some alcohol ink and I have all these other goodies in there and I want to pull off a bunch of all of the crud on my plate at once, I need something that's going to be gluey. So what could I use? So the first thing that came to mind was Mod Podge, which I keep in a little jar here because it doesn't get stuck shut. And this is just some matte Mod Podge. So I'm like, that'll work great. If I want a transparent something to pick everything up, I can use the matte Mod Podge. But I'm like, well, sometimes I want something with a little more body or maybe I want to make some of the colors more pastel without adding more gouache that might not make it kind of have that, um, the strength that I need, like I'd have from acrylic paint. And then I realized, well, I've got Arteza pouring colors. I got a big set of them and I don't like paint pouring, but I really like these on the gel print. I love the finish that I get when I use for gel printing. So there's like four or five whites in that kit. I'm like, well, I'll just take one of those whites out and I'll keep that here. And I can use all these with the gouache instead of acrylic paint. So instead of having, you know, 24 tubes of paint, I've got with caps that I have to deal with. I just take the lid off here and I use a palette knife and I can just scoop out what I want to use on my plate. So I was also thinking, well, I also love to use alcohol inks on my plates. It gives it a really neat look. It's great for that first layer because it's tr translucent and other layers will show through what you put on the front. But I don't wanna have all my alcohol inks out. That's just a pain, it's too much going on. And then I thought, well, right behind me, right behind my desk, I have all my alcohol markers. And I do have some budget alcohol markers that I wouldn't worry if I got them a little messed up. So I discovered that I could use my alcohol markers, scribble them on my plate, spritz them with a little rubbing alcohol, and throw a stencil down on them or squiggle some marks in it or do whatever, smear it around with my fingertip and get some really cool colors that way. So alcohol, so alcohol markers that I have in my office anyway will make a great substitution for alcohol ink. So there's two different unique layers I can get on a print. And then I started to think, well, stencils, duh, I love using stencils on my gel plates. Well, I bought this pack of 30 stencils for like $12 on Amazon. I'll try to remember to link it down below, but it's a great, uh, it's a great bargain. It's got great patterns and I just keep this on my card making cart anyway. So this is already in my studio and easy to grab 30 different designs. That's definitely more than enough for variety. And then because I like to use pan pastels, the only drawback to those is they take up so much space because every pan is so large. Then I thought, well, gee, I've got these Jane Davenport pastels, like an eyeshadow palette type thing. Those will work perfect. I got metallics, I've got warm colors, cool colors, neutral tones, and then I even have a set of um, these Pebbles metallics that will work really well. If you don't have those, see if you have any wild looking eyeshadows that you're never gonna wear because they're just too bold use those or you could even go to um i probably won't go to the dollar store but the elf brand you can get like a big palette of those at target for like i don't know i paid 14 dollars and got a big big up palette of that. That's actually what I tried before I bought pan pastels just to see if I liked the application and they worked great for a lot of those techniques and the best thing is I can use up these and save my precious expensive pan pastels for other projects but look at all the colors I get in such a tiny little footprint. Um, 
And then you can either use your fingers to apply these or I would recommend using uh, just some sponge tip applicators like makeup applicators or pen pastel tools if you have them. The nice thing about using the applicators is that if you're going to like work on a card base like I like to, you're going to keep your fingers clean. So here are some examples. Oh, and you'll want a brayer too, obviously. You always need a brayer when you're doing the gel prints. So here are some of the... Um, the different prints that I did, these were just two kind of like throwaways with my palette, uh, the little piece I was using as a palette, but I found they worked absolutely fantastic for making little prints to build my cards on. Um, I really like that one. That one was done, I think I did that one with the Mod Pod. Actually, it's got a little sheen to it. I might have done that with the white paint, but you can get some really unique looks. Now, you're not going to have quite the uh, versatility as if you had everything but the kitchen sink in your studio, but if you just want to have a little bag or a little box of stuff that you can use in a pinch to do some quick prints, this will do the trick. Now, you know I'm not going to just leave you hanging and not show you how I'm going to use these things. Let's do a print together really quick so I can show you. So I got my piece of plexiglass here with my uh, precision, but I cut this down from a 5x7 um, gel plate and uh, I just love it because it's a perfect size to use with my note cards, my five by, my uh, A2 note cards, which are half a sheet of cardstock. So the first thing I want to do if I want to use alcohol markers is I'm going to do some alcohol markers. Let's do some shades of blue and I'm just going to scribble. Now you could also lay down a stencil and you could color in the um, the pattern, you could draw in the pattern, but just because I'm trying to keep this kind of fast for you so it's not boring, um, I'm just gonna do some scribbling. So I got three different shades of blue. You could even manipulate them around. Now I'm not doing this with my Copic markers, I'm not doing them with my most expensive markers, they're just some of my inexpensive, and I use a chisel tip for that. So I'm gonna give it a spritz of isopropyl alcohol, and then maybe just kind of sm smooch it with my finger, or I could just kind of go over it with a brayer, just like I would with alcohol ink. Then what I can do is throw one of my stencils down on there. Oh, let's do something with a lot of open space. Hopefully that is going to, that's gonna hold some ink and make some interesting texture. You're not gonna see a really strong pattern with this unless you go and you draw like the patterns and you trace the patterns with your marker. I just wanna do this for a little bit of texture. And then we're going to let that dry, which will only take a couple seconds. And we're going to think about what colors do we want to have. Maybe some metallics. I love to do the metallics on my first layers. So um, what I'm going to do is find another stencil. Let's do this one. This looks pretty. Are we dry? Yep, we're dry. Awesome. And I'm just going to grab a little makeup applicator here. Or this is actually a pan pastel applicator, but a makeup applicator will work just fine. And the nice thing about this is like the um, the gel plate grabs your um, grabs your stencil. The only brands I have used, um, well, no, I've used a Stampendous one. I didn't really care for that their creative palette that much, but I really like the Jelly Arts uh, gel plate and I like the gel press gel plate. They're both really good. I think I mostly have purchased gel presses since I found out about them because that's usually what I see at the stamp show, but I find the quality on either of them to be really good. And I cut down my 5x7 one because I had two 5x7s because I had one uh, that, I, that I got with like a printmaking kit and then I had one that came in a art subscription box. Then I would peel this off and you can see we've got kind of this other pattern going on top. Isn't that pretty? And then, um, let's see, then we could do some, we could do some paint. Yeah, we'll do some gouache. So you can either mix it with your acrylic paint or you could do it with your, um, your Mod Podge or even Elmer's glue, whatever you happen to have that you use regularly. I think that the stuff that's in your workspace that you use all the time should be your most versatile stuff. I'm gonna mix on the palette lid here. Um, let's see, I want a contrasting color. So we've got blues and golds there. So maybe I'll do some peach. I think that would be really pretty. So I'm gonna take my palette knife and, actually, I don't think it's a good idea to mix. This is like a foam. Let's take another, let me grab another little, um, I'm gonna grab another one of my gel plates that I actually had uh, something drying on. We'll use that as our palette. 
at that. That was another one. I, that was just a that was just a messy palette I had let dry. I thought I would do a do a print on. And we'll just set that right over there. We can mix our colors right there. That was actually left over from the um, from the five by seven, and I can use this on the scraps from like from other projects that I have. And maybe do a little bit of brown. Okay, and because those colors now, if I want a lighter tone, I can use the the pouring colors if I want a more transparent tone, I want those colors to be brighter than I can use the Mod Podge. So with the Mod Podge, I just gotta make sure that I wipe my, anytime you're gonna dip into anything, make sure your palette knife is clean. I'm gonna grab some, I probably grabbed a little too much to be honest, I have a bad habit of that. I have way more than I need there. But I do like to use a palette knife and honestly a plastic palette knife or an old credit card would be better for this, for mixing just so you don't, um, potentially damage your plate, especially if you have a homemade plate. I would not use um, I would not use this tool on it. I'm gonna dig up my, I have some plastic ones around here somewhere, I just don't know where they are. So I'm gonna dig up a plastic one and, and replace the metal one with that. So I just wanted to warn you there so you don't have any problems. And we will just pick up. I know these colors probably look really, really bland compared to what I usually do but I think it's gonna look really good. And you want a thin full, you wanna make sure you cover it really well so it's gonna pull everything up. Now if you want to get every little smidgen of stuff on that plate, then you want to let it, let your paper dry completely on it. So that's another tip. Now another, another tip, I have a video on this, but um, my husband cut some wood to match these little uh, these angles from the Dollar Tree and we made a little placement jig for my printmaking which um, works really really well. So I'm just gonna set the set my greeting card, my note card here that I've already cut. Make sure your thing doesn't slip. And we're just gonna rub on the back of that, make sure it transfers really well because I'm gonna pull it up now so you can see it. But um, honestly, if I didn't have another print that I had to do, then I would just let this dry right on the plate and pull it up later. That's usually what I do to clean my plates. I'll just throw a, another piece of paper down, let it dry, and then when I peel it up, it takes all the grime off and makes it a lot easier. Now look at that, it's so pretty. It'd make, the really, make a lovely background for a card. Um, you can see a little bit of that texture from the alcohol ink. You can see the pearls really well, and then you've got that acrylic paint in the back. Sky's the limit guys, you can do so many different things with just these few supplies and um, I hope you give it a try. Thanks for watching, please give me a thumbs up if you like these experimentational videos. Until next time, happy crafting! Bye!